The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. John chapter 10 verses 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You and I are in the hand of God. And this is a verse that you need to hold on to each and every day of your life. Psalm chapter 23 verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God will never leave you. He will never let you out of his sight. Isn't that wonderful? Look at verse 4 in Psalm 23. I will fear no evil. I am not going to fear the future. I am not going to fear the present. Why? For thou art with me. And my prayer for you today is that this will be your experience, that this will be your life for you to have the assurance that God is with you. Listen to the assurance of David in Psalm 23, verse 4, For thou art with me, for thou art with me. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Can anyone else say this to you and really mean it? Can anyone else say this to you and truly honor it? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, is God speaking directly to you. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God is the only one who can truly honor this statement because he loves you like no one else. I am personally tired of human love. I am personally tired of the love of a man or of a woman. You see people walking down the aisle and they say vows to one another. They say, for better or for worse. But when worse comes, they leave. You see children who once used to love and hug and kiss their mothers when they were young, mistreat and even steal from that same mother years later. The love of mankind can change, but the love of God Almighty will always remain the same. His love for you will never change. He is a consistent God. He won't one day just randomly change his love for you. The love of God for you is not based on your performance. It is not based on the color of your skin. It is not based on your height, weight, or complexion. It is not based on whether or not you do something for God. God truly and completely loves you simply because he loves you. This is why you can trust his words in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This message resonates with so many true believers because as they look through their own lives, as they look through the struggles they have overcome, as they look at the storms they have walked through, the heartache and pain they have overcome, they know God was with them. As they look at the sickness they have fought through and are fighting, they know God was with them. Do not live with an understanding of an absent Christ live with the understanding of an unseen Christ. Yes, indeed, Christ has gone to heaven in his glorified body. However, this does not mean that Christ has gone millions and millions of miles away. He is closer to you and I than the very air that we breathe, and he is holding you in his hand. John chapter 10 verses 28 and 29. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. You are not going to heaven 
because you are holding on to God. You are going to heaven because God is holding on to you. You have eternal life because God has given you the gift of eternal life. John chapter 10 does not say, and they earned eternal life. No, John 10 says he gives eternal life to them. It is a gift. To be in God's hand requires humility. To be saved requires humility. To receive the gift of eternal life requires humility. Because a proud person believes they can earn their own way to heaven through their own goodness and righteousness. The truth is, salvation requires a person to acknowledge that they can't guide and order their own life. It requires a person acknowledging God as the director of their lives. It requires a person to humble themselves, to see themselves as what they truly are, a sinner that needs saving, a sinner that needs a savior. Not one single person in heaven will be able to look at themselves and say, I am in heaven because of my good deeds and righteousness. Rather, everyone in heaven will, for all eternity, gaze at the precious face of Jesus and be eternally grateful to him for what he did for them on the cross. Psalm 121, verses 4 through 8. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. If you are in the hands of God, the Lord will keep preserving your soul and keep you going out and coming in. It doesn't matter the level of evil in the world. God will preserve you. You are family. It doesn't matter what the leaders or governments in your country say. God will preserve you. Psalm 91 verses 5 through 10. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Jesus has assured us that nothing can snatch you away from the hands of God. God is watching over you, and he is watching over your family. The God of this Bible is actively interested in every aspect of your life, your work, your children, your relationship, your safety, your well-being, your joy, your salvation. He is a God that is interested in you. I honestly believe that we will finally understand the extent that God is interested in us when we are in heaven, and we will finally see how much of an active role he has had in our lives. God is protecting you. God is watching over you. We take for granted things like leaving the house and coming back home safely, but that is God watching over you. All of this is because of his love for us. He loved us and he loves us. It cannot stop. Even when you don't deserve it because of sin, he will still love you. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea. I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. This love is real. This love takes us from darkness into light. This love gives us life. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are outside of Christ, if you are not in the hands of Christ yet, you are living alone. You are living alone with no security. You are living life with no hope for the future. Without Christ, you are living alone. You are carrying the burdens of life alone. When you are in the hands of Christ, you have joy. It doesn't matter what is going on in the world. Joy will always be yours because you know you have life in Christ, and He is the reason you are going to heaven.
this also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.